who prevailed over the weekend in the contest between uh, Iran uh, retaliating upon Israel's destruction of its consulate in Damascus and the UK, the US, Jordan, and Israel attempting to uh, interfere with and nullify that retaliation? Uh, I would say that the um, people of the United States, the people of Europe, the people of the world prevailed. And the reason why is uh, Iran was able to establish um, deterrence superiority over Israel when it comes to Israel's perceived right of being able to strike Iran anytime, anywhere Israel chose. Uh, but Iran did so in a manner which, um, for any rational human being, uh, precluded uh, the need for Israel to retaliate. It was a very sophisticated, a very measured response that um, as long as Israel doesn't do anything crazy, and unfortunately it looks like Israel might be getting ready to do something crazy, um, allows the global economy to stabilize. I just want everybody to understand that if Israel attacks Iran, Iran's retaliation will probably be of a scope and scale that will turn the global economy upside down. You think you don't like gas prices now? Just wait. You don't like uh, food prices? Wait till there's no diesel for, no, for trucks to deliver food to your grocery stores. This is the future of America and the global economy if Israel chooses to, uh, to attack Iran, because the Iranian response will include a retaliation to the, against the United States, which will prompt an American response, which will prompt Iranian closure of the Strait of Hormuz, which will lead to a general strike between Iran and Saudi Arabia, destroying critical oil producing infrastructure. Um, so right now, Iran did the world a favor by politely <laughs> telling the Israelis, you can't strike us for free. There will be a price to be paid. But Israel suffered no real harm. Israel because it's not about Israeli security, it's about Benjamin Netanyahu's political fortune, uh, Israel, under Netanyahu's leadership, has to strike back. At least they perceive they have to strike back. But they don't. They don't need to strike back. Right now, peace exists in Israel. People are in cafes in Tel Aviv. They won't be in cafes in Tel Aviv if Israel strikes Iran. Okay, so that was Judge Napolitano and Scott Ritter talking about the Iranian response to Israel's attack on its embassy in Damascus. The attack killed 13 people. The, the one on the embassy in Damascus, including seven Iranians and I think it's seven or eight and six uh, Syrians. Most of the most, there were a number of Iranian military personnel there from the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, including two generals, I think. <clears throat> yep. Um, that was the attack took place on. The Israeli attack took place on the 1st of April. Iran's foreign minister, Hossein Amir Abdullahain, described the attack as a violation of all international obligations and conventions. His spokesman further added that Iran, at the time added that Iran reserved The right to carry out a reaction at a time and place of its choosing, and it will decide the type of reaction closer to the event. Obviously, that attack has already taken place. Huh. Yes, the the Israeli attack against a consulate facility is in breach of the UN Charter as well as the Vienna Conventions. I think there are two of them. There's one was uh, came into play in 61 and one came into play in 69. One deals with treaties 
and there's like, I think it's the the treaty on treaties and the other one is deals with um, uh, consulates themselves I think and probably the personnel involved <clears throat> Um, yep, the, the IRGC launched its attack on the 13th of April, around 5pm local time, I want to say. Um, it fired dozens of ballistic and cruise missiles and hundreds of drones as part of Operation True Promise. Sirens activated across Israel and explosions were reported in many cities in southern Israel and Jerusalem. These could have been missiles intercepted and drones intercepted in the air, um, but all of the targets were military installations. Those involved in Israel's attack. Oh, there's a squirrel. I think last time I did one of these, I actually saw a monk jack deer. So I've never seen one in before. Heard them. Um, did you, did you, where am I in my notes? Yep, most of the rounds were shot down by Israel, claiming about 99%. Um, but don't know if that's been verified or not. But in the process, Iran learned who would. So, there's another squirrel. There's another one. Number two. I'm obviously disturbing their frolicking time. So what was I? Um, yep. Yeah. Iran learnt of the location of Israel's radars and the type of defence they would encounter and who would support their defence. Namely, the US, Great Britain, France, and Jordan. Mm. The, just the attack was justified on the strength of Article 51 of the UN Charter pertaining to legitimate self-defense and any further attacks from Israel would result in a more severe response. Given that uh, Western air defence systems are in short supply given the war in Russia and the extent of the conflict in Israel, they are in, it will, their stockpiles of air defence is going to be very limited around now. And uh, any future bombardments the Israeli, on the Israeli military will... Oh, there is another one. Two of them. I don't know if this camera can actually record them. Yeah. Last time I saw one it was like dusk and I just saw this shape dart across the pathway in front of me. It was had the soft coat of a rabbit that was almost the size of a wolf, so small wolf. Anyway. <coughs> Hope you got that on this. Um. Oh yes, um, Iran had been conversing with the US through Oman prior to the attacks, so in order to um, so that the Americans knew what to expect and so they didn't freak out and so that defences could be properly prepared so that Israelis could 
declare she could defend themselves and they could chalk this off as a win when they've been put on notice in fact. Uh, anyway, that's it for this video. Uh, I think, yes, reached the end of my notes. Not very long, but somehow a very beautiful day. Nice day to be walking in the forest, especially before hay fever season. And to actually see a pair of deer, it's quite something. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I hope there will be more of these videos made in the future.